So today I want to chat about iced coffee, kind of what I've been recently doing, and the reason why is because a viewer sent in an invention he created to make iced coffee. So we'll open this guy in a bit, but let's quickly chat about iced coffee. Iced coffee is awesome. It's very, very refreshing, very tasty. I, I like it a lot. But uh, there are a variety of ways to make iced coffee. Like you can accomplish the same sort of goal of creating a very refreshing beverage in a variety of different brewing methods. You have cold brew, you have brewing hot over iced, and now you have uh, what I think is interesting is brewing hot and rapidly cooling it down. So these three different methods can all create very tasty beverages. And for you coffee elitists, yes, cold brew is still valid. Yes, you can use fancy coffee and cold brew. Should you do it, that is up to you. I wanna talk a bit about this third method, which is brewing hot and cooling it down. The idea is if you brew stuff hot, like you would with a normal pour over or immersion brewer or whatever, that's all the good stuff that exists already in the coffee, and that should still be there if you just turn it from hot to cold. Whereas with something like uh, cold brew, you know, you're nerfing the coffee, you're shooting yourself in the foot on like what can be potentially unlocked in the cup because of just you're brewing with cold water. And then with something like ice pour overs, you can also achieve something very, very similar, which is bring in all those interesting aspects of the coffee. You kind of then need to think about like what ice cubes you use, uh, the, the amount of dilution that you do, and so on and so forth. And I think that can get a little confusing. Um, and that's also a rabbit hole in itself. And there are a lot of great videos on iced coffee, uh, iced pour over, or uh, iced immersion brews, and so on and so forth. I feel like many of us have dove down this rabbit hole of how do we take all this good stuff and retain it throughout the cup? Uh, if it's there in the hot brew, it should theoretically be there in the cold version when you cool it down. One method was actually what I explored uh, like a year or so ago, which is you just brew it hot and you cover it with saran wrap and then you cool it down. And that actually results in a pretty decent cup because you are minimizing the potential oxidation. Basically oxidation is like the killer of most iced coffees and the fridge or freezer that you are using, like if you're doing iced pour over and you have bad ice because your freezer sucks, then that impacts the cup. So like where you cool things kind of matters, but Nowadays, uh, what I've kind of shifted over to, and it's really because of we see things like the chillaxer and these types of things, is cooling things down relatively fast. There are kind of two approaches to this. So one is you brew it hot and then you take that final liquid and you rapidly chill it versus have a ton of cold stuff in here and have it cool down as you brew. So two very similar ways to accomplish the same end result of still brewing hot, but the way you cool them down and the rates at which you cool down are quite different. You have devices currently like the, the hyper chiller and cold wave, which allow you to accomplish the first thing, which is take that entire thing you just brewed, dump it in here, it'll cool it down. And then there is the second method, which is what I've been doing because I'm lazy and I just want to do less cleaning, is I just take a ton of these whiskey stones, stick them in here, and then have it gradually cool down uh, while it's being brewed. I actually haven't had a chance to compare the two, like is one better than another? I'll say that the second method is a bit easier to clean up uh, because everything's in your craft, so we'll actually brew the second method. Maybe that will be an interesting video to explore at a later date, is like, does the rate at which you cool down, is that even noticeable, like to an extent that it actually matters? So this is basically what I do, is I just take a carafe, and these are, uh, by the way, plastic Triton carafes, and I just stick a ton of these uh, whiskey cubes, whiskey balls into here. I got like a big one and a ton of these little small cubes. And this to me gives me enough cooling capacity to effectively cool down a 15 gram dose to about 250, 260 milliliters of hot water. Probably cooling around 220, 230 uh, mils of hot liquid. So. This is the one big consideration that you need to think about is when you are brewing hot uh, and, and rapidly cooling down with a method like this is do you have enough cooling capacity to actually ensure that all of your hot liquid is cooled down. Uh, you know, I just like doing these 15 gram doses because I'm brewing for myself, but if you're brewing for a variety, of, you know, multiple people, if you're brewing for multiple people, it could get a little challenging. With this brewing method, you are cooling down as 
uh, you're pouring. And you know, you can also do an, uh, something like an, an immersion brew when you are using like a switch or a next level pulsar, and you can accomplish the kind of same stuff, which is, you know, take this hot brew that exists here and then rapidly cool it down versus this, um, each layer of my brew in, in the context of a pour over is getting cooled down uh, as I'm going. And I don't know if one method is better than another. Like, is it, you know, for example here, I could have just brewed this guy hot and then cooled it down. So this is 15 to 240 milliliters of hot water. I'm brewing at about 95 Celsius. That took about, what, two and a half minutes there. Uh, it's, it's literally your normal uh, pour over thing. But yeah, as you see here, this is actually quite cold. And the longer you let this sit here, it's just gonna become colder because each of these uh, whiskey cubes in here actually has some sort of capacity to uh, cool down. I actually like to let this guy kind of sit here for a bit because I think the internals of the whiskey balls are still cold and it takes some time for this to fully cool down. But the nice thing about this is this is, you know, no dilution, right? It's, it's not brewing over ice. You then can just let this cool down. And and the other thing too is I haven't really found too many problems with oxidation. Bottom of this is definitely colder, is, is a little colder than the top, at least on the craft. But let's kind of look at our internal temperatures or our liquid temperature. And also with this is you could just brew this and then dilute less. Like you could just add ice into this and brew at a different ratio. And it is still more of the good stuff is retained in this because you're brewing hot. But let's see how accurate this guy is here. So what, 22 Celsius? I don't know what that is in in the Fahrenheit. 73, the other kind of um, fun stuff with this is you're gonna instantly get some of that acidity that you come out, is our coffee. You retain a lot more florals or a lot more of like the aromatics because you're brewing hot. So that's pretty cool. So to me, this is cold to my tongue. I mean, it's been about a minute and you know, I instantly get the acidity. It's Basically like what this coffee tastes like hot, but it's cold. And then if you want to measure this, and this is no ice. This is just straight from this carafe here. 70 Fahrenheit, we're getting in here. At the bottom of this, it's what, 57 Fahrenheit. Towards the top, it's around 60 something. And that makes sense because I have all these tiny, tiny little whiskey cubes down here. So, you know, this is one method of doing this. It's relatively convenient, but it has the same problem that the hyperchiller has, that this has, which is you can only brew once and you're done. But I think the end result in cup is quite enjoyable. Before we look into this, I also want to just uh, briefly note some kind of observations I've had about doing this, like, you know, doing the hyperchiller method, doing the whiskey stone method is I find that I pick up a lot more on uh, bitters and astringency in the iced form. I guess like, you know, I can brew the same exact cup and use the same recipe and all of that. And if I taste the cu cup hot versus cold, I think my tolerance for astringency and bitters, I just don't care as much on the hot brew. When we cool it down, I find that I pick up a lot more on uh, the bitters and the astringency, you know, the defects in the cup. And I think that's just might be because it's in an ice form, but I just wanted to note that is like, I just find I pick up a little bit more on uh, the, the issues with the brew when it cools down. Whereas if it was hot, I probably would just be like, oh, this tastes fine and ignore uh, them. Or maybe my tolerances shift between hot and cold of whatever my tongue did have. But aside from that, this is, you know, the potential of the coffee is realized in this method. So it's great. And uh, it is, you know, that very vibrant, refreshing coffee that showcases whatever the coffee you're brewing is, but it's now cold. As you pour this out, things are gonna get colder and colder. I think if you consume your single cup of coffee within a reasonable amount of time, you will not detect a lot of the oxidation, but you know, all the good stuff is in this cup and it's ready for you to enjoy. I'm um, using this uh, plastic carafe here is I just put the lid on like this and I got all my whiskey balls in here. I just, you know, dedicate one of these guys with all these whiskey balls, dump everything out here. We're gonna really fill this guy up. And I then can just go and rinse this entire thing 
and then go and stick it into the fridge. The problem with this is this is one brew. Yes, it's still cold, but it takes basically an entire day, depending on how cold your freezer is, for this to recharge. This is the same issue that something like the cold wave, the hyperchiller runs into, is that they're very, very convenient for just getting one cup done, but it's continuous usage that requires a bit more planning. Like if you wanted to make a lot of iced coffee, what I could actually just do is just get a ton of these whiskey cubes and I would have that problem solved. I can't just keep making more of this uh, like I can with something like an ice pour over where I can just keep getting ice cubes and keep doing it. This is why things like this exist, which is uh, what Roland emailed me about is he said, hey, I have this invention that I made to make a rapid coffee chiller. So you want iced coffee, but don't want it diluted? and don't want to mess around with trying to make up different recipes and ice melts and all that stuff, check this out. You're going to use ice anyway, so why not a couple of pieces of ice? Just a little bit of water to get us kicked off. Grab your cup of hot coffee and pop in the coffee chiller. Suck up the cold water and cool the hot. And some of our initial testing, we have seen close to 100 degrees drop in a little over a minute. What I've watched is watching the ice melt down and that gives you kind of a good feel. Your coffee could get somewhere down in the 50, 55 degrees and then if you add a couple pieces of ice to continue to cool, there's very little melding and dilution. And somewhere around now, our coffee should be finished. And you can simply pull this out, which will allow the rest of the water. Shake this out. And on the bottom, I made a mess. You can see the little, I'm gonna kick it on, but you can see the little stirrer that keeps the coffee stirred while it is cooling. And so now we have a cup of chilled coffee. And it's kind of three different parts here. So if we look up here, it is the water dispenser itself. In here, there is a whisk. And then there is a coil here uh, that then feeds into a tube, which is where you will you know, stick this into like a normal five gallon jug if you were to use this as a normal water dispenser. So the kind of idea with this is to basically feed this guy into a jug of ice cubes with some water in it. That cold water will get fed into this coil here and you stick this into your carafe of hot coffee and it will then just cool everything down because you're circulating that cold water through here and there is a little whisk here that will just stir and basically that's how it works. So if we turn this guy on, as we see, that whisk will just continuously try to circulate all the warm coffee, hot coffee around this cold coil. So let's go ahead and try this out. But this is pretty cool. And you know, as you see here, it's probably not that difficult to build yourself. All right, so we'll just do the exact same, brew the exact same cup of coffee, uh, except for we're gonna take the hot brew and then we're gonna cool it down. I got about 300 mils of water in this guy. Get your ice basically making our ice water. This ice in here is going to melt and you can kind of judge that your iced coffee is ready to go when uh, this is melted. You're curious, I'm actually curious myself, it is very cold. It is a lovely 50 degrees Fahrenheit. Our hot brew here is 160-ish Fahrenheit. So generally, you know, you see these guys that are around 160, 170 degrees Fahrenheit is pretty warm. Stick this into here. So it's supposed to be something like this here, where we stick the tube into the carafe and then you stick this part into here and then you stick this part up here so it kind of recirculates. So we want to kind of create this recirculation path of cold water. And I'm just going to turn this on. It's stirring the coffee. So this is really interesting. It's stirring the coffee here.
These coils are becoming colder. And I'm holding at an angle so the, the coils are touching the uh, liquid more. Oh, this is becoming cold, wow. <laughs> cool. It, I definitely got some air into it and we're seeing these bubbles because I whisked it um, up further and I didn't brew as much liquid, but if I tilt it there, that is getting cold and our ice is melting. Unintentional effect, I guess, of doing this. Okay, this is just now cold to the touch. It's really getting there. I guess I can hold it into this direction, so maybe the camera over there can see it a bit better. But yeah, I can get this as cold as these ice cubes here. These, these ice cubes are melting. Turn that guy off. That was a bit of a mistake, uh, running it a little, little much like that, but... That is, that is cold. Okay, unintentionally got some air into our, our, into our iced coffee, but as you see there, it is cool. Uh, well, I'll try this again. I'll use a, a, a taller mug for the next brew, but I'm curious here. 63 Fahrenheit, that's pretty good. It is, it is cold. So now we have our brew. Still smells basically the same as our other brew because we, it's the same coffee, and it's brewed hot, and it still tastes fantastic. I can keep going with this. This is this is still ice cold. I could keep brewing um, and, and cooling it down, so let's go ahead and do that. Except for this time, let's not use such a shallow carafe. We gotta make sure, maybe maybe we gotta brew more, more liquid, or we'll, we'll uh, use a taller mug. As we found out, you can unintentionally aerate your ice coffee which is pretty fun. I guess, you know, it adds to that extra mouthfeel. Not bad for a first attempt. The coil is very cold to the touch. 60 degrees, 50, 50 something degrees, right? It's cold. 62, and our ice water, around 40. As you see, uh, I did mess up a little and I did end up with a little bit of, uh, of that foam. So I'm just gonna go ahead and rinse this off. But I'll, I'll just keep brewing the same amount, which is I'm brewing 15 to 240. Uh, just, you know, same amount of, of liquid that I've been doing up for all of these because I have a tiny little uh, 01 V60 here. But that's pretty cool. And you can take your time too with this. Like, I, f I feel like whenever I am brewing with these whiskey stones. Every single second that they're exposed to the air, the ambient temperature, I'm always a little scared. I'm like, oh man, I'm losing my cooling uh, capacity, the cooling potential. But because this is in this ice water bath here, it's very, very cold. You know, much, much colder than how you would want to actually enjoy your ice coffee. I wanna see if I can get all of these coils here to touch the liquid because all of this is getting cold and that would maximize the cooling efficiency. I do think the stir is actually really helpful, but as we found, we, you know, we're, we're creating a foamy iced coffee, which is pretty tasty in its own right. So this is just finished brewing, uh, two and a half minutes as well. This is very, very hot. So I'm gonna take this part here and I am going to stick it in. Okay, so this is now fully submerged here. Then I'm gonna stick this guy into here. Here we go, I'm gonna turn it on. There we go. I think that was also the first one. It was all flushed out. The, uh, the liquid was all kind of, um, you know, it takes time for this to have some sort of circulation. I don't know what words are. I'm getting caffeinated. So here we go. This is getting colder and colder. It was way too hot to touch because this is, but now, Oh wow, yeah, you know, only a few seconds have passed. This is now much more bearable to touch. Pretty good. And this is not even the coldest water we could be using. Our ice cubes are already melting. Like, you know, they're becoming tiny here. But what I could do is I could just, just get more ice cubes. And we've obviously taken a bit of time too because we're filming all of this. You could be much more efficient if you're doing this at home yourself. But yeah, that is, that is pretty cool already. I'm gonna turn this guy off. 
I actually did what, didn't even need to hold the dispenser button because this is a water dispenser. But um, that kind of reminded me of like a uh, nano foamer, so I decided to hold the button down. But our ice is almost all melted in here because we've taken a long time when we're filming. But of course, when you are doing this at home, it's probably going to be much faster. Now, this is pretty cold. Let's still get our temperature real quick. Yeah, 60, 64 Fahrenheit. That's not bad. You know, that is cold coffee there. Slightly different coffee, but still cold to your tongue when you taste it at 60 something Fahrenheit. And you could even add ice in this, you could brew it at a stronger ratio, then dilute with ice. But the cool thing with this, with Roland's invention, is that you can just continue to brew and brew and brew. All I would have to do is just keep adding more ice. I could throw salt in here. I could do a ton of different things to ensure that whatever is running through these coils is very, very cold. This is something that somebody, whoever is watching this video, you might want to invent something like this and maybe you will create a cool product for all of us to buy. I just really wanted to show this off because I just love it whenever viewers send stuff over. They spend the time and effort to build something, write in, send it over, and I want to show this off to the world. Otherwise, like, you know, this was kind of just an overview of iced coffee nowadays, what I've been doing, and then also this type of invention, uh, which is rapid coffee chilling. It is happening and I love that people are, are coming out with things like this. But otherwise, thank you so much for spending the time to watch this video. Thank you Roland for sending this over and if you have any questions, please let me know. But otherwise, I will see you guys around.